Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Tuhila Live. My name is Faraz Patel. I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us and, of course, my colleague Lukmag Shadrach for taking us through for that first one hour. Now, this weekend, the EFF celebrated its 10th anniversary and in doing so, they sold out an entire FNB stadium. They've become a party that has shaken the political landscape and would that have the capabilities of making an even bigger inroads come next year's general national elections. Joining us now to discuss their rise in the 10 years and what future they hold within the political landscape for even bigger impact, I'd like to welcome political analyst Professor Sipo Siepi. Professor Siepi, good evening and thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Oh, thank you for inviting me. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Professor Siepi, we know that uh, the EFF makes an impact at every event, wherever they are. But Saturday was something else, wasn't it? And if you're looking for a, a sort of uh, reaction from them to anyone who had doubted just their capabilities as a political party, Saturday was a classic example of it, wasn't it? Yeah, the EFF understands the importance of optics. And uh, on Saturday, they made sure that the optics uh, are sending a message. So when you have a, um, an event like this, uh, those are two important things, uh, the optics and the message. And uh, the fact that they were able to fill up the stadium as big as um, uh, FNB Stadium in Soweto was simply an indication of the, the robustness of the, the party in terms of its organizational capabilities. And they were also making a statement that unlike many other parties who within four years or three years of being established, they go down. The EFF has been growing by leaps and bounds and the, the optics uh, could not uh, om almost send that message very clear. But what Malema also did was to make sure that the, the message uh, captures the sense of vibrancy and the militants that have become associated with the EFF. Professor Siepi, the, the statement, as you mentioned, was quite clear from Julius Malema and, of course, the rest of the party. Now, they have the tendency of wanting to be populist, but how do they now balance populism with regards to actually talking or well, walking the talk? Because everyone asks that question, can they walk the talk if they are given key, key, uh, key sort of uh, key roles with not only national government, but also within the municipalities and the metros that they have quite an influence in? Well, you ended with the proper phrasing, the issue of influence. And this is what uh, political parties are about. And uh, the way you make sure that you are influential you occupy all sides of influence and sides of struggle. And the EFF defined its uh, approach, which is distinct from other parties, by saying it will use uh, areas like the courts as a, a site of struggle. It will use the mass mobilization, the streets as a site of mobilization, and also of giving a strong message. And it will also use the parliament. And what we've seen is a party that has not only been militant in its approach, but it has also been radical in terms of its own language. We must also remember that it is a parties like the EFF or somebody like Malema who has made sure that the words and phrases that were almost banished in our political lexicon are brought back. The whole concept of nationalization, socialism, land expropriation, free higher education, it's been pushed by these young people who are members of the EFF. And we've also seen that even at universities, they've been almost gaining ground. And of course, uh, the nature of uh, student politics is that you cannot rely on them. But at the same time, having shown, having that mass following, that mass following must also translate itself uh, with votes. We also know that uh, there are parties that do not do so much mobilization but they, they know that on the day of voting, they make sure that they, their systems and processes are in place to make sure that whoever supports them 
uh, goes to the ballot box. So the challenge that the EFF is going to face is whether it, it will be able to turn that mass support, massive support that we saw on, on, on Saturday, whether it's going to be able to turn it into a voting uh, a muscle. And if they do that, then they will be able to occupy and influence a number of metros. Of course, uh, Malema has been ambitious to talk about uh, them taking over. But we also know that uh, organizations don't grow that fast, even when they do grow. Uh, the first few years are the most critical, where you see an exponential growth. Thereafter, there's a, just a slow growth. So the notion of taking over can only be done through coalition with other parties. Prof. C.A.P., the, the structure of the EFF, and you, you, you spoke about, obviously, many parties that start just fall by the wayside, COPE being exactly one of that. Um, Structure-wise, how, how are they able to maintain it? Because you look, obviously, who they had, many of them coming from the, uh, from the previous era of the ANC Youth League, but they were also to get advocate Dali Mpofu and so many others to join their structure and maintain the, the, the core values within that party. And that's important, isn't it? Because if they're not able to maintain the structure, they would have fallen on the wayside like many other parties. Yeah, there are two elements that uh, can explain why the EFF has been able to stand the test of time where other parties have not. The first is that uh, this is an offshoot of uh, the radical element of the ANC, which was the youth league. What the Malema and the, his fellow leaders like uh, Floyd Chibambo were able to do, were able to build on the support that already existed of the youth league on the ground. And they, because of their charisma, they were able to pull those structures and build an uh, already robust existence on the ground. So that was the first thing, that it is not a party like Ahang that starts from nowhere. They already had uh, structures because the Malema had been a tactician and has been a strategist, but has understood the ANC's weakness and understood the ANC quite well. And he was able to bring that mass following that he had as a leader of the ANC Youth League. So that is the first thing. The second thing that Malema and the, the EFF were able to do was not to try to be like Pope, which was claiming to be a real custodian of what the ANC stands for. What they did was to define themselves outside the ANC as distinct and representing something that the ANC does not represent. They agreed that the ANC had played its role but they felt that the ANC is no longer capable of taking the struggle for emancipation of black people to the next level. And this is what they zero on to say, we are not going to talk about what the ANC will talk about. We will talk about the radical economic transformation, which is some, uh, somehow they took um, part of what the ANC also spoke, but the ANC used, those used that language, but it had no intention. You have members of the ANC because of uh, the fact that the ANC does not know what it stands for. So when they speak, you, that is a, a language of a particular strand or a faction within the ANC. But when the EFF speaks about this, there's a sense of unity. Mm -hmm. So within the ANC, you have capitalists, you have socialists, you have uh, uh, traditionalists, you have, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, people who see themselves as social democrats, uh, so, and others see themselves as communists. But the EFF has been able to say, we are not as confused. We're not a type of broad church that the ANC is. And when you have a broad church, you are not able to move with speed. But because the message of the EFF is, is united, and because of also focusing on a particular section of society, the marginalized, it is uh, able to be consistent. The ANC, on the other hand, it's a multi-class organization. So it must respond to all classes, the, those who are exploited and those who are exploiters. And this is where it finds itself almost um, being schizophrenic. So the EFF does not suffer from that level of schizophrenia that you find in the ANC. And it is for that reason that it has been able to sustain that language. But more, more importantly, it is a party of uh, young people. 
So you're talking about people who still have more Prof. years. Siepi, Prof. Siepi, I have to stop you. I need one question to just get out of you. And I wish we had more time to continue this conversation. Uh, the, the ANC right now, as it stands, they're losing a lot of ground when you look at the electorate at this very moment. Uh, is their downfall going to be the rise of the EFF from a national point of view? I know there's been talks of Paul Mashatile coming in as president with Julius Malema as deputy. I don't know how far-fetched that is, whether that's a reality. But what impact can the EFF make come next year's polls? Well, the EFF is uh, definitely going to grow, not as fast as some people think it will. And the ANC is going to continue to be on a downward spiral. And it's even so because uh, you're talking about a, a party that has no ideas. Mm -hmm. The party where the president does not know anything, the only thing that he knows is more about the uh, uh, opportunities for public relations. But the, And also when he's asked questions, he calls for commissions. So effectively, it's a directionless uh, party, and the EFF is going to exploit that weakness. But so will other parties like the DA and the uh, other parties like ATMs. They are going to take advantage of the weaknesses so that are very glaring within the ANC. Other than the fact that the ANC has failed South Africans. Uh, Prof. Sipo Siepi, thank you so much for joining us here on Hila Live, and we hope to have you soon on our programs again. Uh, thank you. I look forward to that. No problem. Uh, it's Professor Sipo Siepi, uh, political analyst, just breaking down 10 years of the economic freedom fighters and what will happen going forward. After the break, we're going to pay tribute to Moroccan defender Nohela Benzina. She made history for Muslims. She made history for Muslim women becoming the first player to wear hijab at a World Cup. We'll be talking to Amin Rad. He's a journalist based in Morocco to talk about this historical weekend that was made. Do stay tuned.